During the week, when I want to find a quiet place for prayer here at St. Paul's, I will often go to the columbarium right over here in St. Martin's Chapel. There I am in good company, surrounded by the saints of St. Paul's who have been laid to rest, their names etched in gold. The majestic stained glass window towers heavenward, depicting saints throughout history from the prophet Elijah to Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Then there are the blank slates, marking the spots reserved for future inhabitants. A gentle reminder to me that I am but a sojourner on this earth, and another home awaits me. There have been no shortage of such reminders in the life of our community as of late, as recently we've hosted an unusually high number of funerals. Since May, we have commended 18 souls to God's eternal care at St. Paul's. 18 beloved children of God who have gone on to greater glory. Many of you are shouldering grief from this profound loss and from others. And even if you did not know a single one of those 18 souls, their deaths have impacted us all. As our patron, St. Paul, reminds us, what affects one member of the body of Christ affects all the others. Now, I can imagine what some of you might be thinking to yourself right now. It's a Sunday morning in the late summer. Things are supposed to be light. Perhaps you came today hoping for a hopeful, uplifting message. Why, you might be wondering, all this talk of death. Well, for one, church is one of the safe places to talk about death, one of the places in our society that doesn't stigmatize it. This is an affirming, supportive community in which to confront our mortality together. And as Christians, we find much reason for hope, even in the face of death. We do not deny the sadness of being parted from the ones we love. But in death, we also discover some of God's most incredible promises. Promises that in death, life is changed, not ended. That nothing, not even death, can separate us from God's love. That because Jesus was raised, we too will one day be raised from the dead. Now these promises are so incredible though they can stretch our capacity to believe. To be sure, it can be difficult to put our trust in them. But this is where we have an opportunity to practice faith. Our readings this morning have much to say to us about faith. In the letter to the Hebrews that Chris read, the word faith appears over and over. By faith, our ancestors received. By faith, we understand. By faith, Abraham obeyed. The refrain repeats like a steady drumbeat. By faith, by faith, by faith. The author of Hebrews starts by giving us a definition of faith. Faith, he writes, is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And to show us what a life of faith looks like, he gives us a brief old Testament history lesson, citing several biblical heroes from Noah to David to Samson to Samuel, the hall of fame of faith, if you will. Now, we'll hear about several of these faithful characters next Sunday, but today, our model for faithful living is Father Abraham, the biblical patriarch. And Abraham's defining act of faith was this, When Abraham was called by God, he set out to the place he was called, not knowing where he was going. He left behind the only home he'd ever known to journey toward a future promised by God, a future that he could not yet see. And in this way, Abraham's journey of faith is not unlike the journey of those of us who are grieving, 
Like Abraham, the mourner puts one foot in front of the other in faith toward a destination she can't see because her vision is clouded by grief. Now, in the beginning of our passage from Genesis, though, Abraham doesn't look quite as faithful. On the contrary, his faith is hanging by a thread. He is very old. His wife is long barren, and he is left without an heir. And he's devastated, convinced that there is nothing God can do for him. And into the depths of his despair, God speaks an incredible promise. He promises Abraham not just a son, but descendants more numerous than the stars of the sky. It is an incredible, impossible-sounding promise. This promise of new life when all that Abraham can see is death. And Abraham chooses to believe it anyway. He chooses to trust God's promise of a future that he cannot yet see. Thanks to biblical scholarship, we know this passage of Scripture was written centuries ago for people who were losing their faith. People in exile who had lost confidence in God's power and no longer had eyes to see God's promised future. So the biblical writers sought to breathe new life into the faith of these downtrodden exiles by giving them the story of Abraham's faith. This is a comforting reminder to us today that God's people have struggled to remain faithful since the very beginning. Throughout time, amid the changes and chances of life, we have needed the stories of other people's faith in order to remain faithful ourselves. As I've walked with grieving families these last few months, that is, as it has been my privilege to do. I've been steeped in the burial liturgy of our prayer book, and I have marveled anew at how the words of our ancient prayers provide so much comfort in difficult times. They give us words when there are no words. And I can tell you that there's a moment in the burial liturgy that makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up every single time, just as the dirt is placed on the casket, or as the urn is laid to rest. The priest prays these words. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God, our beloved, ensure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life. My friends, God does not delight in watching his people struggle to live faithfully. That's why in the fullness of time, the God who is always faithful sent us his son, Jesus, to perfect our imperfect faith, to walk the way of faith for us, to give us a hope that is sure and certain. No matter where you are this morning on your journey of faith, whether you are weighed down with grief and at the brink of despair, whether you are steadfast and confident, whether you are restless and wandering, the God of love and mercy longs for you to give him your heart in faith. He longs to be united with you today in the holy food of the Eucharist. And at your journey's end, he longs to welcome you to that heavenly city where he has prepared a place for you. Amen.